Good morning and welcome to worship this morning as we gather today on the 12th Sunday after Pentecost. We remember uh, this week the life of Bev Schultz who passed away and we keep in mind as we gather and keep our prayers for Sandy and their family. As we gather this morning, we remember, we hear today Jesus' words, who do you say that I am? As we think about that and as we ponder that, let us take a moment. Let us pause and prepare our hearts and minds for worship. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. 
Amen. Let us pray. O God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Isaiah, the 51st chapter. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, and to the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham, your father, and to Sarah, who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion. He will comfort all her waste places and will make her wilderness like Eden, her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving and the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation. For a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly. My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look to the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever, and my deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward the holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. They will sing of the ways of the Lord. The great is the Lord of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the furry of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me, for you will make good your purpose for me. O oh Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Our second reading is from Romans, the 12th chapter. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be comforted to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God what is good and acceptable and perfect. For the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body, we have many members, and not all members have the same function. So we, who are many, are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of our Lord. Thanks be to God.
the Son of the living God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered him, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. And he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning. As we gather this morning and hear from our gospel reading, Jesus asks this very pertinent, this question that even to us is so important, who do people say that I am? Who is this Jesus? And what do we have to say about him? You can trace the entire history of the Christian faith from the disciples on to now about people trying to answer that question. Volumes and volumes have been written asking the question, who is this Jesus? What is he about? Who do we say that Jesus is? There's a Christian writer named Brennan Manning. And in his journey of faith, he writes that the single greatest cause of atheism in the world today is Christians, who acknowledge Jesus Christ by their lips, but walk out the door and deny him by their lifestyles. The believing world simply finds unbelievable. It's a cutting accusation against those who profess faith in Jesus, whose confession is that Jesus is their Lord and Savior, who worship who speak of Jesus to their friends and family, yet as so often happens, their words are drowned out, muffled by their actions. We see this all the time in the Christian faith. I don't know how many of you, uh, maybe it's just me, but I follow a lot of various Christian groups on social media. And we spend a lot of time, and what I see more than anything are not people building each other up in the Christian faith or inspiring each other to faith, but a lot of times in the Christian faith we spend a lot of time tearing each other down. We spend a lot of time trying to prove to one another how we are right and the other is wrong. Now imagine for a moment that you're somebody who's looking for faith. 
Somebody who may never have stepped foot into the walls of, the, of a church. Somebody who's just seeking, looking online. You've heard about this Jesus. You've heard about Christianity. And you go looking for what this is all about. And what do you find when you're up at one o'clock in the morning searching on Google? But arguments, Christian leaders tearing each other down, Christian denominations fighting amongst each other, calling each other out. denying even their own Christianity. Oh, that person is just not Christian. It's a dangerous place to put oneself. Of course that person is going to be turned off of the church. Of course that person is not going to find their way into the, into the faith. Because what they've probably heard about Jesus is that Jesus talks about loving our neighbor. Jesus speaks about how we love the stranger, the poor, the widowed, the orphaned. That Christians are those people who put that confession into practice. Who enter into a relationship with God and a relationship with each other through that God. And they do things that transform the world, not by arguments or philosophical ideas or disputes between theology, or calling out one Christian leader over another, but they do it because they put their words into the actions of love that God has called them in to be. Peter's confession of Jesus, you are the Christ, the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Words. Words that are eventually put into action. Words that when that will grow and Peter will rise up as a leader among the disciples, among the apostles. But that's not to say that he's not going to make a lot of mistakes along the way. Now, Peter will be invited to over and over again die to himself. He will over and over again be transformed and require to be transformed and need to be forgiven. Make mistakes and try again. Acknowledge his sinfulness before God, his denial of Jesus. And God does that to him. In our story, he starts off as Simon. But his faith in God, the faith that God has given to Peter, changes that. Changes him from Simon to Peter. He kills Simon and raises up Peter. He makes him new in faith. If you follow Peter's story all the more into the Acts, it is to Peter whom God reveals one of the most changing things in the entire scriptures. It is to Peter that God reveals, you shall not declare unclean what I have declared clean. Which becomes radical and inclusive. 
It becomes, out of Peter's confession and Peter's actions, becomes a, the church is able to form and become a place of inclusivity, a place where God's people are called to gather, a place which transcends culture, nationality, background, calling all people to faith. calling all people into relationship with this Jesus, this Christ, this Messiah, this Son of the living God. That's not to say they didn't have disagreements in that early Christian community. It's not to say they didn't have discussions, and some of them maybe even loud, But those conversations and those discussions about what it meant to be a follower of Jesus, what it meant to profess faith in Jesus, at the end of the day, always ended in the love of God in Christ Jesus. The recognition that Jesus is present among us. For whenever two or three are gathered, there... He is in our midst. There's something in that for us today. As we enter into this time in our country where we get pretty polarized, when we start rallying behind political candidates and political parties, There's a temptation in us to call out our neighbor, to name call. There's a temptation for us to, because somebody may believe or think differently than us, to dehumanize them, to take away from them their dignity as a human being. Don't give in to that. Don't call out each other's Christianity. Because every day we are called and invited to answer this question. Who do we say that Jesus is? Who do we say that he is? We do that when we interact with each other, whether in person or on social media. We do that when we speak of love. Toward one another. You see, as Paul writes in the letter to the Romans, we can have a diversity of gifts, we can have a diversity of opinions, we can have different things that are given to us, but we must first and foremost recognize that those things come from God. That we can have conversations with one another. We can look at the same coin at both sides. And we can profess that same coin, profess that same faith in Jesus by daily answering who do we say who Jesus is. For this Jesus is the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of the living God, the one who is love incarnate, whose love for us was so immense and so great that he called each and every one of us to himself. 
and continues to call us to himself. To take us, to take us and build with us to join in him who is our rock, our salvation, our hope, in the mission that he has called us from the very beginning, called us to mission to love our neighbor, to love God, to love our neighbor, to welcome the stranger, to care for the poor, the widowed, the orphaned, the naked, the hungry, He is the one who was sent to us to save us, to rescue us who were lost. And who calls us to do the same. He is the one who loves you. Who was willing to die for you. and who invites you every day through the work of the Holy Spirit to be united in love of him and of his Father. He is our Savior. He is your Savior. Your beloved. And you are his forever. This is what this church confesses. This is the inclusivity that Jesus comes to bring about in the world. That all people are his. Thanks be to God.
Together with the whole church, we profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed, saying, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and helped by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Responding, hear our prayer to Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the church, that it may find itself united in Christ Jesus, that the Holy Spirit will continue to work in and through it, calling all people to itself, sending them out in mission to serve the stranger, the poor, the widowed, the orphaned, to care for those in need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our world, for our planet today. We especially pray for those who are in the paths of storms and recovering from storms. We especially pray today for those in California, for those on the Gulf Coast, for those in Iowa, for those throughout the world who are experiencing any change in weather patterns that are causing damage to crops and fields, that God may heal this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray today for our leaders, for the leaders of this country, the leaders of the world, for those who are working diligently to fight the effects of coronavirus and unemployment. We pray for your mercy, your kindness, your love to be shared among your people. We pray for peace in the upcoming election cycle. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray today for all who are sick or suffering, who are in hospital rooms or home recovering. We pray for those in mental health institutions. We pray for all who are suffering from anxiety or depression. We pray for your healing, your mercy, your love, and your compassion. We pray above all for your wholeness to come upon us and among your people who cry out to you. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for this church, this community of faith gathered online, they may be kept united and whole, brought together for your common mission as we look forward to the day that we will gather in person again. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray today for teachers, educators, and all who are in schools. We pray especially at this beginning of the school year that all may be kept safe, that technology will work, and students will learn and teachers will be cared for. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray today and remember before you all of those who have died who now sleep in the promised resurrection that their confession of faith in Christ Jesus brings them into new and eternal life. We remember before you today, especially your servant Beverly, and we pray for her family as they continue to mourn. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. Please, wherever you are, share with each other a sign of Christ's and abundant peace. Peace be with you. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for your life-giving word. 
for calling creation into being, declaring forgiveness from the cross, and delivering the spirit of rebirth. We praise you, O God, for your word. We praise you, O God, for your word. Your word is a lamp lighting our path, a mirror reflecting ourselves, a shield providing us refuge, a fire burning for justice and truth. Your word is sweeter than honey. It nourishes our bodies like milk. It sustains your people like bread. We receive your promises more treasured than gold. We bless you, O God, for your word. We bless you, O God, for your word. Open our ears to your prophets, apostles, and saints, and to all the cries of the needy. Breathe into your church the mighty spirit of Christ that heeding your voice of beauty and power, we are strengthened to serve wherever we are called to. To you, Father, Son, and Spirit, the source, word, and breath, we offer our thanks for your life-giving word. We offer our thanks for your life-giving word. Amen. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. People of God, a few announcements as we conclude this morning. Uh, First and foremost, I want to thank you again for being here with us this morning. Uh, Thank you to all of you who gathered last week after service for our semi-annual meeting. Uh, That report is available uh, in the Facebook Uh, on our Facebook page as well as on our web page if you'd like to find what we talked about and where how things are going for the church. Uh, We continue to encourage your generosity uh, during this time that we are apart. The church is still running and functioning. Uh, It's just that we're not gathering in person and your financial support is helpful to keep that happening and to make sure we still have uh, we're at a good spot for when we come back together. We are still looking forward to the end of, at the end of October for coming together, providing the county, uh, things seem pretty calm, and uh, so look forward to more announcements on that. A couple on a personal note, uh, it's looking like uh, the baby's going to be here um, a little bit sooner than we had expected, uh, which is great news because, you know, Angie's ready to have a baby. And, but we are going to be, so plan to see that, we'll have a plan released hopefully on Tuesday uh, for how things are going to go moving forward, how things are going to happen. I am going to have a 30-day family leave with that, but just to remember, just because I'm on family leave does not mean I stop being your pastor. If you need something, if an emergency comes up, there are people to get a hold of. You can also, you have, all of you have my direct information. Stay tuned on Facebook for uh, any announcements or changes that may come about in the next, um, coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, Everything next week, we're going to add a little bit extra specialness to our service. It's been requested that we do some prayers for healing, some intentional healing prayers. So next week, we're going to include those prayers within the service. Um, So please plan to come and join and be a part of that as we gather together. Thank you once again. Uh, for joining us. We're very thankful for Carol and Catherine and Chris to come and, and be a part of our service. Receive the blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.